All right, so lesson 4.3, we're going to use some tables and graphs to solve. So our big idea, the tables and graphs are often useful for comparing values from two or more solutions. It's no vocabulary words today. We're going to jump right in. It's all going to be just one problem today, and we're going to look at some different strategies for using tables and graphs. And we're going to be using our graphing calculator. So even if you're watching this at home and you don't have a graphing calculator, you can see how useful it's going to be in certain situations where if we have to make a graph ourselves by hand, you know, that's cumbersome and is not always the most efficient way to solve these problems. But if we have a graphing calculator that'll make the graph for us, it can be a quick and easy and efficient way to solve these problems. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So example number one, you're the manager of an office and your company needs to lease a copy machine. You must choose between two supply companies. So we're going to try and figure out what's the better price. First one, Acme Copiers offers a copier for $250 per month. Okay, and there's an additional charge of one cents per copy. So you're leasing this, you're not buying it. So it's, you know, renting it. And so it's two fifty dollars a month, you pay that, and then one cent for every copy. So if you don't make a lot of copies, it's going to be pretty close to two fifty dollars per month. And then the more copies you make, the higher the price is going to go. And then Best Printers offers the same machine for $70 a month. So much cheaper per month, but you can see where they're going to get you. They're going to charge you three cents per copy. And now you might say, well, that's only two cents more, but in general, in an office, you make a whole lot of copies. So it's kind of just going to be dependent on how many copies you make at a time. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let X represent the number of copies. So one cents per copy, three cents per copy. And Y is going to be the total cost of leasing the copier. So we're going to write an equation to represent the cost of leasing. So I would normally write cost equals, but they already said we want Y to be the total cost. So Y equals, now Acme Copiers, again, is 250 per month, so that's 250. That's your constant, plus 0 0.01 times your number of copies, which they said is X. So there's an equation for Acme. Letter B, write an equation to represent the cost of best printers. So again, cost, which is Y, equals, it's going to be $70 plus, three cents per month. I'm sorry, per copy. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our calculator to make a table showing the following. So we're gonna go ahead and, oh, Acme Copiers, I'm gonna put this right here. It's 250 plus one cent per copy. So if you made zero copies, you'd plug in zero. It's gonna cost 250. And Best Printers is 70 plus three cents per copy. So if you made zero copies, you're just paying 70. So if you literally just took the machines and put them in your office and nobody uses the machine, then obviously this one that's $70 a month is cheaper than the one that's 250 a month. So it's all going to depend on how many copies you make. Now you can go ahead and plug 2000 in times it by one cent, add 250 and go down. But today we're going to focus on how can we let the graphing calculator help us out? How can that make us a little bit easier? Okay, so we're going to go to y equals, which is where we normally plug these in. And we're going to go ahead and put the two equations in. So 250 plus 0 0.01. Then your x button is right here. And that's it. So 250 plus 1 cent x. And then in y2, or actually, I mean, wherever you want, but I'm going to put in y1, y2. We're going to do 70 plus 0 0.03 x. Now you could go ahead and graph those, and we've done that before. We've looked at graphing on this. But we want to look at a table. And there is a function on the calculators that has a table, and it's right above graph. So it's in blue. you got to hit the second button to get to it. So we're going to hit second, and we're going to hit table. And you can see it's made a table for us. And here's our first line. Zero, we should have 250 and 70. And we do. And then you can see it's counting up by one. So one copy, two copy, three copy. So you're going to add one cent for every one in this, and you're gonna add three cents for every one in this. Now, we're gonna count by some pretty big numbers here because in general, you make thousands of copies in an office. Okay, so one copy, two copy, that's not gonna be enough. So we're gonna look at the function of how do we change this table so it fits what we need. And what we need to find is right here where it says table set. And that's where you can kind of set what number your table starts with. So right now it starts with zero. And what does it count by? Right now it's counting by once. So we're gonna to wanna to set it so it starts at zero but counts by two thousands. So to get to it, again, it's in blue. You're going to hit second and window. Table start. Right now it's at zero. We're okay with that. 
And then right here where it has the triangle, the triangle in math means change. So the change in the table right now is 1. We're going to change that to 2,000. Hit Enter. We don't need to mess with these right now. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our table. So we're going to hit Second and Table. If you take a look now, our x values start at 0 and goes 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, just like this. And here's all my values. And so instead of having to compute every single individual one, I can just go ahead and copy these down. So for 2,000, it's 270 and 130. For 4,000 copies, it's 290 and 190. I'm just going to go straight down here. 310, 330. You can see it's counting by 20s. So for every 2,000 copies we go up, the cost is going up by $20. So 350, 370. And then on this side, you can see it's going up by 60. So for every 2,000 copies, it's increasing by $60. Okay, so we have used our graphing calculator to quickly fill in this table, and now we have some information we can compare. So we're going to flip to the back and answer some questions now based on the table. So it says, for what values of X, which is number of copies, is Acme copies cheaper? And so I've got another one here, so instead of flipping back and forth, I'm going to pull this over. So we want to know, when is Acme cheaper. So it's not cheaper here. It's not cheaper here. 310, it's still cheaper. 350, all of a sudden now it's cheaper. So at 8,000 copies, you look, it's more expensive. But when you get to 10,000 copies, it's now cheaper. So as soon as we get past 10,000 copies here, Acme is cheaper. So if you're making more than 10,000 copies, just looking at this table, Okay, it's going to be cheaper. So how do I express that? What values of x? So when x is greater than or equal to 10,000. Okay, right at 10,000 it is cheaper, so we're going to put the equals, and then anything greater than 10,000. Okay, so on the opposite side, what values of, of x is best printers cheaper? So if I took, take a look at best printers, it's cheaper all the way up until the 10,000. Now we could say anything less than 10,000. But we don't really know that. Do you know that at 9,999, that Best Printers is cheaper? You don't. Not based on this table, you don't. And so we can't say everything less than 10,000 because we just don't know. But we know from 8,000 down to zero, it is cheaper. So we need to express everything from 8,000 down, just based on the table we have in front of us right now. So when X is less than or equal to 8,000, it's cheaper. And we do want to say... Also, when it's greater than or equal to zero, because we're not going to go into the negatives. So if we just say everything less than 8,000, we are including the negatives. So to be technically correct, we don't want to include that. If this is zero and this is 8,000, it's going to be everything in between. It's going to include 8,000. It's going to be zero. It's going to be everything in between, but nothing down here in the negatives and nothing up here in the positives. Okay, so based on the table, it's not obvious when the price will be the same at either one because there's nowhere on this table that they're actually equal. Now we can kind of figure out where that's going to happen between which two numbers, but we don't know for sure. So let's answer this question. Between which two values do they appear to be equal? So here's where the change happens. Acme is more expensive at 8,000 and it's cheaper at 10,000. So somewhere between 8,000 and 10,000 copies, there's going to be a break-even point. All right, so it says use your calculator with some different x values to try and find the break-even point. So we're going to take a look at this. If you look at this table, where does it start? 8,000. Where does it end? 10,000. It's counting by 500s. So if we go back to our calculator, we're going to go to our table set again. And now we want it to start at 8,000. And we want it to count by 500s. And if I go back to my table now, I can fill in these numbers and start to get a better picture of where this is going to break even. So I'm at 330, and then at 8,500, I'm at 335, 340, 
345, 350. And on best printers, I'm at 310, 325, 340, 355, and 370. So if we take a look, the two companies will have the same price when X equals NY equals what? And so here's where they're the same price. Okay, more expensive, more expensive, the same. All of a sudden, it's less expensive, less expensive for Acme Copier. So our break-even point is at 9,000. So when X equals 9,000 and Y equals 340, what do those mean? When X is 9,000, that's 9,000 copies. And the X value is where it costs $340. So that's the break-even point. At 9,000 copies, they're both both going to cost you $340 a month. And then if you make more copies than that, all of a sudden Acme is cheaper. And if you're going to make less than 9,000 copies, then Best Printers is going to be cheaper. All right, last page. Now we're going to use the graphing calculator to check the result. We're going to go ahead and we're going to graph these. So if you go ahead and you just hit graph, let's get out of here. If you hit graph and you just wait, you're not gonna see anything because our graph right now is zoomed in so much that we're not gonna see it. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this in our window. So if you click on window, X needs to go from zero to 2000. So our X minimum, we're gonna clear this out and just put zero. If you just start typing, it clears it out. And our maximum is gonna be 20,000. Okay, and our Y minimum is gonna be zero and our Y maximum is gonna be 500. And if we go ahead and hit graph now, you should see your numbers. They're going to cross. So it says go ahead and sketch it in your window. And this doesn't have to be perfect. So we've got one that comes up like this. And then we've got one that cuts across like this. And we're going to use the intersect command here to go ahead and find out So go ahead and find out where this is. So if you go ahead and you go to calculate, that's where you can find this. Second, you're gonna hit the trace button to get to calculate. And there's a bunch of functions that we've kind of looked at real quick, but now we're gonna use it. We're gonna use the intersect function. So that's number five. You can either scroll down to it and click on it, or you can just hit the number five. And it's gonna ask you for the first curve and second curve. We've looked at this. If you have multiple lines on your graph, you have to identify which two you're trying to find the intersection of. Now we only have two. So first curve, it doesn't matter, that's fine, hit enter. Second curve, it's on the other one, that's fine, hit enter. And then it says guess. So you wanna scroll as close as you can to where they intersect. It doesn't have to be perfect, hit enter. And it's gonna find that for you. And so the point of intersection, they give it to you right here, is 9,340 which makes sense. That's what we just looked at on the last page with the table. So the two lines intersect, that shows you where they're the same. So this one's cheaper down here, more expensive up here. This one's more expensive here and cheaper here. That's the intersection. And again, what do these coordinates mean? We've got the numbers 9,000 and 340. So 9,000 copies, 340 so some ways of solving this with the graphing calculator when the numbers get big and we need to start going across a, a big span and we don't want to guess and check for our whole lives. We want to be able to plug some information in, some equations in, and then use the graphing calculator to help us solve.